Hey guys, this is a post-production pie with srlounge.com. All right, we're on to part two of the detail panel where we're going to cover noise reduction. Now, before we get started on this, I am I have loaded up exercise file 1-10. Let's make some basic adjustments to this just so we can get it brightened up so we can see a little bit more of the noise in the shadows. So I'm going to just take my exposure up a bit uh, just to brighten it to probably where it should be. And then uh, let's bring up our shadows just a tiny bit. Not that I would normally. But I want to kind of amplify the noise just so we have a lot of noise to kind of deal with and see when we're making our noise adjustments. And that's fine right there. Let's go back to the detail panel by hitting Control 5 or Command 5 on a Mac. And let's zoom into our image where the noise would appear or be more, most prominent, which is in the shadows. So I'm going to zoom in basically on this guy's suit jacket right here. And we'll actually look at part of the, her face too so we can see kind of everything. Alright, so from right here we can see quite a bit of noise in our image. This is a one-to-one -one preview and we see a lot of grain in here. Now the first options that we have for noise reduction is luminance noise reduction. And what that is, is it's, it's going to reduce noise based on, this is kind of standard noise, noise that's caused by brightness levels. There's two types of noise that you're going to be dealing with. One is luminance noise, one is color noise. Color noise is caused basically when you have, when you're shooting at a very high ISO and uh, you know, you're shooting something that's green and when you zoom into that area that's green, you actually see little flecks of green, little flecks of yellow, little flecks of, of brown, and you have different bits of color in that area. That's referred to as color noise. Luminous noise is just that general grain noise that we see in those areas. So we're seeing a little bit of both in this, where we can see kind of uh, colors that are a little bit darker right next to colors that are a little bit lighter. That is color noise, whereas the rest is just the general grain is luminous noise. All right, so taking luminance noise reduction up is going to basically reduce that overall noise that we see in his suit jacket. But we're still going to see a little bit of color noise where we can see kind of shifting colors in these little flecks that are right next to each other. So to get that out, we take our color noise reduction up. And the higher we take the color noise reduction, the less of those kind of different appearing colors that we're going to see right next to each other in those little flecks. So if we go all the way down to zero, you'll see that even more prominently where we can see blues now with reds now with kind of like all these different colors mixed in on that noise right there. So the color noise reduction actually comes defaulted to 25. So usually at 25, it's about right. If you're shooting at super high ISO, it might be good to bump it up to 50 if you see a lot of color noise after you adjust the luminous noise. So let's go back to adjusting the luminous noise reduction. We do want to be careful of a few things. Now we've adjusted a lot of the noise out of his jacket, but if we go up too high, we start seeing JPEG artifacting or we start seeing too much smoothing basically where it's where we basically see like just it almost like like a painting effect where everything's just been painted over. If you look at detailed areas on the skin, taking up noise reduction too high just kills a ton of our detail. So taking it back down, you can see a lot more detail and appear in the hair where you can actually see strands of our hair. When we take it up to 100, we basically lose most of those strands and we only see some of these highlights. Okay, so you do want to be careful with noise reduction. Typically, we're leaving noise reduction at around, you know, 30 to 40. We're not going too much above that unless an image absolutely needs it. Now, the next option that we have here is detail. And detail is basically a, an option that you have to preserve detail in the image. The lower that you go, the less detail you preserve, while the higher you go, the more detail you're going to preserve. So it kind of has this noise reversing effect where it's kind of adding a little bit of noise back to preserve some of the detail. You do want to be careful because it will create kind of little artifacting effects if you take it up too high. So typically we're leaving detail just right at its default of 50. And we also have another slider for luminance noise reduction, which is contrast. And basically this is just how much contrast you want to preserve in addition to the image. So the more contrast, again, the more noise you're going to see in the image because it's boosting up the contrast in those areas. So the less contrast you go, the less you're going to see, the less noise you're going to see as well. All right, guys, so you want to strike a balance between luminance, detail, and contrast with every single image. And you also want to strike a balance between color noise reduction and the detail preservation with color. So a typical setting for us, this image, let's see, this image was shot. I'm going to hit I to bring up my information. I'm going to hit I again to pull it to the second information. So we see this image was shot at 2000 ISO. So for a 2000 ISO image, we'll usually put noise reduction at around a luminous level of 35. We'll leave detail at 50, leave contrast at zero. Uh, I'm going to boost the color noise reduction up to, like, say, 50. And then we'll leave the detail preservation for color noise reduction at 50 as well. So this is kind of a typical setting we'd use for this kind of image. And then we want to also do sharpening on this image to kind of adjust the sharpening levels up. So I might take sharpening up to 70, raise up to 1.5, detail to 30. And then we can kind of do a little bit of mixing and matching between short noise reduction and sharpening to get the right effect. 
So from here, I might go up to like 45 on my noise reduction. From there, it looks pretty decent. We've taken a really, really high ISO, super high grain image and made it really quite nice and printable. And this grain is kind of a nice kind of grain. It's really not going to look bad when printed out at all. Lightroom's noise reduction is extremely powerful, guys, so be sure to take advantage of it. Since Lightroom 3, actually, the noise reduction has really been boosted, and in Lightroom 4, it's even better. So it, it even rivals some of uh, you know Photoshop's third-party applications for noise reduction. So be sure to take advantage of the noise reduction in Lightroom. Let's uh, hit Control-5 or Command-5 on a Mac to collapse the detail panel, and uh, I'm going to reset out this image, as well as the image for sharpening that we did with that last one, image 1-13. Uh, reset out that one too, and uh, we're going to go on to the next tutorial.